Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. Today I am bringing you my diagonal lid cube box. Um, so it does exactly what it says on the tin really. Um, it is a lovely little cube box. Um, I've actually made this little belly band and this um, cute little sentiment doesn't actually sit on the box, it's part of the belly band. Um, I'll just take it off and then I'll show you when you just open it up you have this cute little box inside so it's quite a decent size you could probably get a couple of those Ferrero Rochers in there um, I bet you could probably get five or six of my favourite little um, Ritter Sport uh, type chocolates in there I haven't actually measured them but I bet you could um, so yeah nice little size nice little gift box um, this isn't a deered in um, so you could always make it with something um, I don't know maybe to be a bit more removable or add anything really if you wanted to but yeah I think it's, it's really quite sweet and then as I say it just closes up with the belly band on top oops more fingers and thumbs this morning first video of the day for me today and my day of videos so get them all done in one go and then I don't have to worry but yeah I I like it and this is from the many messages it is just one of the sentiments on there but yeah I think that's so cute and yeah it might not be quite straight but <laughs> I think it's really quite cute so let's go ahead and make it so for your base, you will need some cardstock. If I just move my trimmer out of the way. So for your card box insert, you need card that is five and 15 sixteenths by five and 15 sixteenths, which would be 4.9 by 4.9. And we're gonna score all the sides. And you don't need a shim, that's why I've made the um, measurement as it is um, score all sides at two inches or five centimeters whichever you prefer and then as with most boxes we're going to fold and burnish all of those score lines and then we're going to do some cutting but I don't seem to have my big scissors at hand so I'm going to have to go with my snips which isn't a problem. Um, slightly different way of doing this box but it doesn't really matter how you do it. Um, so if you look at the centre cross here I'm literally just cutting the four corners into tabs this way. Um, as I say it doesn't really matter which way you do it as long as you have four tabs and a cube <laughs> okay so all these are trimmed down so as you can see I'm just cutting tabs and cutting wedges the cat's joined in today so it's not my dogs yet just the cat today hello yes you need to be a good boy just like the girls need to be a good girl Okay, so he's just as vocal as the dogs, as you may have guessed. So, um, okay, these aren't equal, they aren't even, it doesn't matter because they are literally just going to be adhered up. And I'm just going to add my adhesive onto my tabs. Good boy, go and lie down somewhere. And then just make these up into your cube. And then once you've done that, there's your little cube box. So you can just pop that to one side and you need to make your wrap. So beautiful DSP. I do find this such pretty DSP. Uh, sweet symmetry. So lovely. Um, and this one you need to be eight and a half by six or 21 and a half by 15. Um, on the short side we're going to score at two and four inches which will be five and ten centimeters. We're then going to rotate and score at 
half an inch, two and a half, four and a half, and six and a half inches. And in centimeters, that will be one and a half, six and a half, eleven and a half, and sixteen and a half. Um, I did make a centimeter one here. Um, as you can see, it's exactly the same. Um, exactly the same and virtually the same size too um so yeah it's, it's just the same but as i say i did make a centimeter one up so i know that the measurements work okay so you can't see these score lines extremely well but let's fold and burnish them anyway I made a mistake last night. I was sat watching TV making some stuff up. Um, I scored them the day before and I sat watching TV trying to fold and burnish and cut um, and it was black and white paper as well and it was just getting near on impossible in the light of the lamp. <laughs> so yeah, it uh, wasn't, wasn't easy. Right, so once I've done my folding and my burnishing, you have your thin tab across the bottom here. What you're gonna do is cut up each of these score lines to the first one. So you're gonna leave this center piece all intact. Then we're gonna cut up these. And I'm doing this first because it's easy for you to see um, where the sections are. And I'm gonna repeat on this side. the way down as I say keep that center piece as a whole so we're cutting down each bit here so all of these are now separate okay you need your ruler which I didn't get prior you need your ruler and we are just going to measure um why did I not write this down that's rather foolish of me um, right, half, half, oh I did write it down, one and a half centimetres, half an inch, which is what you want to measure this little tab at here and also onto your square. So half an inch, one and a half centimetres, so if I just pull that slightly, I'm marking this first square here and you're going to score right up to the corner. Okay, so we have, I'm hoping you can see, it starts here and scores up to that corner. Okay, I'm going to repeat that, not on the next one, but on the next one up. So we're going to miss this one out. Okay, we're going to miss this one out and we're going to score the same on this one. So a half an inch and then up to the corner. Okay, we're gonna repeat the same on this side. So my tab is half an inch and I also want to mark half an inch. So you're going from the center of the square up to the outside top corner, miss that square on to the next one, make sure I get my measurements correct, up to that top corner. Now you don't need to score, you can use a pencil if you prefer. And then what we're going to do here, so I'm going to trim that little piece there, because that's going to become a little tab. Same here, so it's this tiny thin little bit just here. Once we've done that, we're then going to cut down either the score line or the pencil line, whichever you chose. The one we missed, we now want to cut into a wedge. And then we have the same again here, cut down that score line or pencil line 
And the same again here. Trim that down and create our wedge. So that is what one side should look like. And we're going to repeat the same on this side. So no score lines means it's a tab. And we'll just cut those wedges. Then I'm going to tuck that in and fold it under just to give me easier to hold on to. Tuck those in and bring that one out. Crikey, fold it under, there we go. So this one doesn't have any scoring or pencil marks. So same again. And then this last one cut along the score line. So your piece should now look something like this. Let me just go, oops. No thank you Mr Scoring Board, I don't want you to fall over. I'll just get rid of my mess. You know I can't work with mess. So this is how pretty our lid now looks. We just need to add some adhesive. So I'm going to add some adhesive onto my tabs that I created here and both this side too and then just to, oops stuck to it tiny bit on this one and this one okay so you fold your little tiny strip under and round and as you can see it's already created that front lip of the box. We're then going to fold this piece onto here and you will need to trim just ever so slightly because it'll overhang you see just there it will just overhang but you just need to trim it it's fine. So that one onto there and then same again this one onto here and just the other side onto there. And I'm just going to go in with my snips and just trim those tabs ever so slightly to give it a neater finish. I have to turn this one round because I it's really awkward when you're trying to cut against the box. Last one. There we go. Okay, so those are all nice and tidy now. And as you can see, this just closes over. So, get this the right way round. Let me just get my, <laughs> get my, that's right. So, where your little lip is here is where your box is going to sit in. And then this, just make sure when you close it that these sort of, you maybe pull them out a fraction, otherwise they'll get stuck in or catch on your DSP. So just very gently sort of hold those out. And likewise, when you tuck the front in here, just remember that you've got extra bits there too. So you might just need to wiggle just to make sure it doesn't catch on anything. And there is your beautiful cubed box. Now, all you need to do now is add your belly band. This one I'm using the Just Jade and Gold Braided Ribbon. And as I said, I'm literally just going to tie a tiny... Oh, these aren't my ribbon scissors, that was foolish. Um, I'm just going to tie... I think I've actually put my paper the wrong way round as well, but never mind. Never mind. Right, so I'm just going to tie... A pretty, pretty knot. Is there such thing as a pretty knot? I don't know. So just make sure it's all relatively tight. Yeah, that's quite nice. And then I'm just going to grab my, oh, I need to stretch my arms, I think. Grab my ribbon scissors so that these cut straighter. There we go. And then all I need is my little sentiment so as I say I have many messages you have two options here so obviously it's a huge 
huge stamp that goes on your F block. However, if you're brave enough, and I'm not, you can cut these, cut each individual one out, then you can then stamp them individually. The downside to that simply is that you will have to still use the one die to die cut your shapes, but equally if you're happy just to stamp a single sentiment on something, then you could cut them. Um, as long as you don't trim any more than you do, just one simple cut um, and you can use them individually. But I don't like to do that because I do sell mine on once they're retired um, and I don't like to butcher them too much. Um, so yeah, so um, I have already die cut one of these out just simply because I use it underneath there to sandwich my state my sentiment together so I've already done one there um, so I just want my just jade now and I simply need to just stamp that sentiment onto here and then I just need to grab my an emboss machine and I have to use the big one because of this die because obviously I can't fit it through the small one and you just need to line this up and it's more a case of lining the paper up than the die really because the die sits quite big on there. Alright, let's see. I knew that was going to happen. So let's just give it another little move. Oh crumbs, stop sliding. Right, that's it. Hold it together till it goes through. And as I said, I had already pre-cut one of the squares, just a blank one, so we didn't have to go through all that again. Let me just move this. And then, oh crumbs, nearly lost it. So that's the front, that's my old one. And then, as I say, I just grabbed a couple of um, small dimensionals here, the mini ones, one on the top, one on the bottom, and I also added a glue dot into the centre, and that is so that it stays in place on my ribbon, otherwise it would just slide around. So let's take backing off those, pop my die cut underneath and then it is a case of just eyeballing stroke lining it up and then you can just squeeze your finger underneath just to hold it in place. Obviously make sure it's square <laughs> and there we go. There is my diagonal lid cube box. Hope you like it. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.